Hi, this is Christina. In this video, I'm going to show you how to place an order in Salesforce by providing a secure protected API endpoints with Red Hat integration. What I'm showing you right now is a retrieval API, and this API is protected by one of the features in Red Hat integration. It's called 3 scale, which is um, protecting your APIs from unwanted access and also at the time, at the same time, collecting all the access statistics and collect them into a dashboard so that you know who is, who is accessing your data. And then we go into the retrieval of your wine data. So what you see here is an integration inside Views Online, one of the features in Red Hat integration. So to place an order inside Salesforce is a complex work. There are several different attributes or objects you need to create inside Salesforce. So how do we turn a simple application call into a proper Salesforce order? It's very easy with Views Online by breaking things down into different steps. And by breaking them into asynchronous small steps make it easier to manage as well. So here I'm placing separate calls into Salesforce, create different entities as well as providing a notification through my Gmail services. So let's go through the wine ordering demo. Here I just query a, a wine, and then I'm gonna place the order by placing two bottles of my, um, wine, uh, my wine order. And then let's take a look at the integration itself. So the Fuse Online is in charge of all the integrations. Here you see all the activities that has happened after I place an order. And if you take a look at inside Salesforce, you'll see that the account is called Christina, which is, which is my name I placed, and also a contract um, that is related to this account with also the, um, the portal that I'm going to order. Um, th this is my order. Um, so this order reflects what I typed inside my application, which is, has two, and then it gives you like the total price of my order. Right, so this is what's happening inside my uh, integration. So you see a lot of activities has going coming in and out, and you you also see if some of them were successful or not. So you get to trace every single steps inside the in integration, and if you take a look at my emails, you get to see a notification has been sent to uh, my to my inbox, and this is where I get my notifications. So next, I'm going to show you how to build the solutions with Red Hat integration. So first, we need to create the API endpoints that receive the post order and then send into a messaging queue. So we're going to start the broker inside um, our platform, which receives all the events. And then we're going to start defining our APIs. So we're going to define an order APIs and then also define a data type, which is the format that we're going to receive the orders from. And then we're going to define a post method. And in this post method, we're going to um, define the request body which is the, um, the data format that we have just defined, which is taking in as a JSON format of the orders, and then also defining the return uh, response. In this case, it's just going to be a simple string. And then we're just going to give a name and, and a, a description of um, this particular APIs. And then once we're done, we're going to give this integration a name. And then after that, we can start implementing, right? So, so what we're doing here is to send the order into a messaging and later on, these events will then be picked up by the other processes. So here we're just mapping um, between what's coming in and what's going out. So the simple drag and drop allows you to define what's coming in and out of your APIs. Once you're done with the API creations, you're ready to publish this integration. And once this integration is published, you have a working API that's ready to listen to any orders coming from the web app. And all those orders will then trigger events in the topics. So we need to actually place this, uh, this order into Salesforce. So to connect to Salesforce, we need to set up a configurations. So we need to retrieve the client ID and client secret from Salesforce and then configure that into the all of application management inside Fuse Online. Once we've done the configuration, we're ready to create that integration, which is creating the accounts and then retrieve the accounts to create another contract. So that's what we're doing. So we're listening to any events coming in. So any events that's been placed, the order has been placed, we'll be listening for those events. And then once we have these events, we're going to create, we're going to make a call into Salesforce and then create a, create a account. So we're going to do, um, we're going to select Salesforce as the components. 
And in this case, Fuse Online has already have a lot of the um, Salesforce object already defined. So all you need to do is to pick up and then, you know, choose what kind of objects or what kind of data that you want to create in Salesforce. And then once you've done that, we can, um, once the account is created, we can uh, retrieve the account ID, which is crucial for creating a contract in Salesforce. So once we've done that, we can um, send this um, events into another topic. And so anytime there, when there's an account created, I'm just going to go off and then create another contract, which is a very um, a synchronized process, which is a very good um, architecture to have in a integration architecture, right? Integ integration system. So um, now we're, what we're doing is to um, listen to every single one of the account created, you know, events coming in. And then we're gonna go off and then create a, create a contract inside Salesforce. So what you're seeing, what, what I'm doing here is very similar to what you see before, but this time I'm gonna choose, just choose the contract. And you know, having to create this contract is mandatory in Salesforce, so don't ask me why. Um, so here we're doing some more mappings, but instead of you know, getting the mapping, of, uh, the data coming from the request, we can also define constants uh, from inside our um, uh, Fuse Online as well. So we can just you know, create a constant 24 for our contract terms, say our contract is valid for 24 uh, months. And then when we uh, created the contracts, we, we should be able to retrieve the contract ID, which is mandatory for creating an order inside Salesforce. So here I am, um, after I created a contract, I need to send off a fire off another events to tell my system to go off and then create orders. So at the same time, I'm sending it off to another queue, which is um, very similar to what I did before, which is making sure that all the steps are asynchronous so I can handle more load if I needed to. Say if it is slower to create a, um, a order process, maybe I can split up more, um, con uh, more containers to process it. Um, yeah, so then we go into the order creation. So for order creation, it's very similar to what we did before. So it's the same thing happens over again. So for system developer, it should be very simple, intuitive, and just retrieving and then sending it off to another queue, which is creating an order project. So these are all the things that you need to do in Salesforce. So again, don't ask me why. And so this time, I'm just going to go ahead and create an order. Um, so what happens here is a little different um, because we actually need to know the price book ID. So I took a shortcut by you know grabbing the, the standard price book ID from my Salesforce. So you can look it up from the Salesforce as well. But um, if you want to go, go ahead and create one, you can. And then just map that to um, the things that you need to insert as, as with the Salesforce object. You know all the things you need to place it as when you're creating orders, like name of your um, the order, the account ID of your customers, the contract that you have, and also you know the names of the customers and things like that. So very simple, very intuitive. And then we have all the information available to create the actual um, order product mapping, so that every single one of the orders will contains the product that we have that we have ordered inside Salesforce. You'll see that later on uh, when when I get to the to, to the end steps. Now we have the, um, the order ID ready. It's time for us to actually place an order. So to place the product in my order, right? So in, for that, I need more information. And the things I put into my queue or the things I tr to trigger my events are very basics. But sometimes I need more content. So in this case, I have added another steps is to retrieve more detailed information from my wine data. And then once, once, once I've done that, I'm just going to call the order, order products and then, you know, send a notification to my customer that says, you know, your order has been done. And so that's what I'm going to do. So here I'm going to listen to all the um, incoming um, events coming in from, you know, order creation so that I know there's orders coming in. So I need to add my products inside, right? So... Um, and th at the end, I need to send off an email notification, right? And in the middle, <clears throat> I need to retrieve some of the detailed um, wine data from my internal system. So this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to map um, some of the things I wanted to select. Um, I need to know which wine I'm going to select. So this is why I'm going to map my IDs into, into um, the things I want to select. And then I also wanted to create a product order 
older product inside Salesforce, right? So it's, it's in there, everything is predefined, everything's easy inside Fuse Online. You can simply just choose and then just create and then just map everything you want to enter into Salesforce and then just drag and drop and map everything into the, um, the targeted um, Salesforce object. So it's a Salesforce order item, just placing every single one, like the name and the, um, the unit price, you know, all that kind of stuff I need to have in my order. And then what I'm gonna do is to place a to create a uh, emails, and I want to make sure that I have a template so so it's easier for for user to read, right? So this is what I did. I created a template, which this template then will be applied to every single one of the emails I sent. So I'm gonna just map all the things I need to have in my templates, and also add the templates into the message I want to send inside my emails, and that's very simple and easy, and I'm done. Same as the other one. Now I'm just gonna publish this integration by giving it a name. Let's call it um, product notification, which is creating a product inside my order and also sends out notification to my users. And then let's wait for it to start. It's gonna take a couple of minutes to start and then we'll have all the um, integrations running on the cloud. And then we can uh, review all the activities that's been um, sent and different versions and then numbers of errors. So this is my demo that shows you a more complex integrations between Salesforce, email notifications with Red Hat integration. Thank you very much.